Welcome to part two of our four-part series on e-commerce checkout best practices. I'm Nathan with Snipcart, and in part one of this series, we went over what every shopping cart needs at the most basic level. Now, if you haven't seen that video yet, it's linked in the video description below, and I encourage you to go check it out. In part two, we'll be narrowing in on some crucial cart details like why you should let users check out as a guest, the standard checkout flow for physical and digital products, and which information you should and should not be asking for at the billing and shipping level. After watching this video, you'll be more aware of what could be improved in your own checkout flow to minimize cart abandonment and increase your revenue. Let's get started. There are two types of products that you can sell online, physical and digital. Physical products could be like clothes, books, or anything that needs to be shipped to or picked up by a client. Digital products, on the other hand, are things like subscriptions or files. Think about Netflix subscriptions. But before we look at how your checkout flow changes for these products, we need to make sure that you're setting the right tone for your customers at the earliest stages of checkout. The very first thing you need to ask yourself with your current checkout flow is, am I giving my clients the option to check out as a guest? And you've probably even been in that situation before where you wanted to buy something, but unfortunately you were forced to create an account to move forward with checkout, which means that you know how annoying it actually is. For a customer, being forced to register an account is a major turnoff. Whenever money is involved, the key to a good user experience is giving your client as much freedom as possible, which includes giving them the freedom to check out as a guest with no strings attached. In time, if someone becomes a returning customer, they can then choose to register an account and engage more frequently with your brand, but the choice should always rest with them. In fact, according to the Baymart Institute's 2018 survey, 23% of transactions were abandoned because people felt forced to create an account. That's one in every four customers, which as you can imagine, starts to add up fast. So with that out of the way, we can now take a look at what a standard checkout flow should look like for physical products, and later on, a simplified flow for digital products. When you're selling physical products, your checkout flow is typically divided into six steps. The shopping cart, which we covered in part one, billing information, shipping information, shipping method, payment method, and confirmation. Once your customer has filled their shopping cart, they're ready to move forward to check out with billing information. First, it's important to understand what billing information refers to here. Billing information does not mean payment method, which will come at the end of the checkout process. Here, at Billing, you'll be asking for some basic information about the client such as their name, their email address, and their physical address all of which is in the merchant's best interest to get as early on as possible in the checkout flow. Here's why. You'll want the name of the client for personalized contact in the future. you want their email address for confirmation messages as well as enabling card abandonment features. And you'll want the user's address early on in the process to proactively adjust tax rates for the shopping cart subtotal and either pre-select or suggest shipping methods based on location. So basically, with their address, you're able to pre-populate certain fields and adjust tax rates to make the checkout flow easier for the client in the long run. You could also, in theory, use this location for geo-targeted promotions. Let's say, if, for instance, you found that 75% of your customers were shopping from the East Coast, it might change your marketing strategy. You've probably noticed that you could obtain all of this information at the shipping stage as well, but as we'll see in just a bit, shipping information is only included for buying physical products, whereas billing information is included in physical and digital products. Plus, gathering this information earlier on in the checkout flow at billing is going to allow you to offer better suggestions for shipping methods and adjust tax rates. Again, this is all incredibly lucrative information to have as a merchant, so it's best to obtain it right from the start at the billing stage. But now let's turn our attention to a box that we've all had to check or uncheck at some point in our e-commerce experience. Should billing and shipping information be the same by default? 
You've likely encountered the situation where you can check the box to have billing the same as shipping information. Now, this is pretty standard practice as it simplifies the checkout process and leads to a better user experience. However, the question remains, should you mark billing and shipping information the same by default, or should you leave it up to the customers to clarify that the two are the same? Believe it or not, this actually depends on your product and who your customers are shopping for, which is something that only you can know. In other words, there's no universal answer to this, but here's some practical advice. If your product is typically bought as a gift for someone else, something like flowers, engraved items, gift baskets, things like that, then assume that billing and shipping information are not the same, but allow the client to clarify otherwise if needed. On the other hand, if your product is typically something a client buys for themselves, things like shoes or clothes, then assume that billing and shipping information are the same, but allow the client to change if needed as well. It's impossible to know all of your customers' individual intent, but you should have a pretty good idea of whether the majority of your customers are buying these products for themselves or for other people based on your audience research. The checkout flow for selling digital products is obviously much more simple than physical products. Shipping information and shipping method are both removed, making the whole process from cart to confirmation much faster. So the checkout process goes from six steps to four, shopping cart, billing information, payment method, and confirmation. Everything goes by much faster and all of the fields in those categories are exactly the same. So now that we've seen the steps involved for the checkout flow, let's go ahead and look at the real issue at hand. What information do you need to complete a successful checkout experience? Here we've reached one of the most critical aspects in the checkout flow. What information should you be asking for while collecting billing and shipping information? The answer is surprisingly simple. As little as possible depending on your business. Some fields are mandatory like address and email. Now, these are pretty much true of all industries because merchants use those things at a practical level to deliver the product and send confirmations and shipping updates. But ask yourself, what information do I really need and what information can I cut? For example, what would you do with knowing a client's company name and would that actually benefit the client in some tangible way? Would asking for a client's phone number do anything to help the client other than make them worried that you're going to be involving them in some telemarketing scheme? Again, the goal is to know what information will be of practical use to the customer's experience. On this picture, you can see the distinction between which fields to keep and which to cut. Notice that on the left side, we would have to scroll down just to fit all the information on the screen. The right side, however, involves way less information, is more to the point, and much more inviting for a client to continue. So why is this important? Well, besides just avoiding the general feeling of invading the client's privacy for a t-shirt, it's important because of the rise in mobile e-commerce. As mentioned in part one, mobile e-commerce is expected to rise to 54% by 2021, and cart abandonment is already at 85% from mobile devices. Entering information in your smartphone can be cumbersome because touchscreen keyboards are usually more tedious to operate than standard desktop keyboards. The more information you ask for, the harder it becomes for the client and consequently, the more likely you are to lose that customer in the checkout flow. I recommend doing a healthy review of your current checkout process on mobile and in each field ask yourself this, do I need this information to help the client or to complete the checkout? If yes, keep that information. If no, lose it. Before wrapping up, let's talk about another way you can simplify the checkout flow for your customers. Leveraging the power of information you already have to autofill fields for your client. If your customers are registered users, meaning they have chosen to create an account with you, then you already know their first and last name, email, address, and phone number. 
why not capitalize on all of that information they've voluntarily given you and make a better user experience? In other words, pre-fill all the fields with the information you've already been given. Okay, but what if your clients don't have an account with you? They've all been checking out as guests. How can you pre-fill information you don't already have? Fortunately, there's still a lot of existing information that you can use to make the client's lives easier. For example, in the initial address field, use Google Autofill or some similar feature to autocomplete their full address. This has become pretty standard as browsers like Chrome have popularized saving passwords, addresses, and payment methods to make field input easier. And you can and should be leveraging that technology to help your clients. If autofill doesn't work or you just simply don't want to use it, you can also pre-populate city, state, and country in the expanded address fields. This information comes from either related address fields that have already been input or IP or browser cached info. In other words, make sure you are intelligently leveraging current technology to do as much work as possible for the client. Like we said in part one, the whole idea here is that your clients shouldn't have to work themselves to give you their money. It should be as easy and pain-free as possible. Thank you so much for watching. Please stay tuned for part three, where we'll be getting into even more depth about nailing your checkout flow with topics like showing secure payment and shipping options, providing order confirmations, decluttering your cart design, and leveraging visual cues to guide your customers through to checkout. You can stay up to date on this video series in a few different ways. First, you'll want to subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can subscribe below. Then feel free to follow us on Twitter under the handle at Snipcart or by following me personally at Nate P.D. Thompson. Finally, you can always skip ahead by reading the posts that inspired this video series Optimize your e-commerce checkout flow for 2019, which is linked in the video description. And as always, if you enjoyed this video, feel free to share it with people you think would find it valuable. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you soon in part three.